This is my own Epson, I've had it for a few years. Uh, I got it with a few faults on it, a couple of faults on it should I say, and one of them is this error code that happens from time to time, 0x05. And it's already had a repair to stop this from happening, uh, maybe about three years ago and it's come back. So we're going to take a look at it and see if we can fix it. Right, so we'll switch her off. And we will unplug the power. It is relating to the document feeder, what you probably normally get, or I get anyway. And I've seen this elsewhere, and I've prepared a couple, is that um, it makes a horrible noise when you switch it on from the document feeder. And uh, it's, it's to do with the wiring loom, in my case anyway. So first things first, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Take the screw off. And with a flat blade from the back here, just give it a squeeze across, pop that cover off. Now this has been modified and um, it was modified years ago. What had happened is, from the wiring loom from the actual machine itself, from the scanner unit, is uh, which actually goes to a board in this back corner, is a cable, uh, a wire had snapped and I think it's probably happened again. So what I did last time is um, I soldered the wire and then taped it up and taped the whole thing up to try and protect it. Because when you open and shut the document feeder to copy something off the glass, it puts a bit of strain on the, the wiring loom and uh, within time it actually snaps it off. I do know there was a modification done on these to stop it from happening going forward, but uh, this is missing a hinge that, uh, not a hinge, like a cover that protects the wiring loom as it goes through the machine. It was ripped out and then modified. What I'm going to do on this occasion is take this scanner unit off and replace it with another one because uh, I've, I've got a scrap machine with various faults on it. Um, so I'm just going to rob it and fit it to this machine instead. But I'll show you exactly what the fault is so you can be repaired. Right, okay. So we're going to take this whole scanner unit off and to do that, I'm going to open the front cover. I'm going to lift the, the document feeder up off the machine I'm going to take this display off and it just clips off. There we go. That comes off like this. Now you've got a ribbon cable underneath the control panel which feeds along here and goes into a board here. We're going to take it off from here. Okay. I'm just double checking I took the power cable out. So it's, it's held down with uh, double sided sticky tape. Uh, we'll take this screw off here. I'll just put that back on. Just leave it loose like that. And we will also here, this is for the speaker, let's pop this off. Alright, before I spin it round, we're going to take these three screws off here. Let's set those three off. You can see it's already wanting to lift, which is fantastic. Right, spin around. Take this off. I'm not sure if we have to, but I'll take it off. Right. Now we need to take this cover off here. And it does appear, not be an idea because it's tucked behind, we take this cover off here at the back as well. So we'll start with that first. Take that cover off. Right, now 
Okay, this, this part can be a bit fiddly getting this cover off. It can stay in there, it'll come straight off for you. I tend to put a screwdriver behind the cover there and just kind of push it off. There you go. Okay, now, if we just remove this screw here, this gunner wants to move one on the other side as well. And we now have a lot of movement. We just take this tape off, which protects the earth screw. Now all the connectors are different, go in different slots, but you can't get them the wrong way around unless you force it. But they are a little fiddly to get your fingers in. So just pull out all the cables. So you can see, I'll just pop them off. That's all the cables out now from the board. Now it's not quite ready to lift off at this point. If we do lift it up gently, just a little bit, you can have a look underneath. And we've got an FSC cable right here. So pop that off and also a connector here. Now we can lift this whole scanner unit off. That's it. All right, so we've got the whole scanner unit off, including the document feeder. Okay, so you can see where the control panel goes on here. We lift the document feeder up, and you can see the whole uh, platinum glass, the slip glass, the scanner itself. You can see the wiring loom going from the document feeder. Oh, take that off. And if you look, that's where we unplugged it from the board. And you tra you track it all the way across to here, it goes through that hole there. And it comes up through here and connects to the relevant components, the sensor, the drive motor. So what's happening is that cable is snapping. I'm just going to take that tape off just to have a look and see if there is any damage to it. Right, okay, I've took the tape off and this is what I've found. So the installation tape, I mean, it's been on for a few years and I've used this machine myself. Um, and it was the fault was intermittent, didn't do it all the time, so it wasn't a proper break, but as soon as I took the tape off, I did obviously uh, break it completely, but that's the wire that snapped. I don't know if you can see that there with my finger, it's just, it's just there. And there's the other part of it. And uh, the best thing to do if you have this problem, I would suggest is just to strip the wire. And um, using a solder and iron, I just soldered it back on again and put a bit of insulation tape around it. And then, and it insulate the whole the whole lot. I mean, you can do it properly and put a put a sleeve on it if if you're good enough with the solder and iron, or if you know anybody that that is. There's plenty of videos out there on how to solder. So that's the cause. I mean, you could deep, deep, uh, deeper into it and get a bit more play on there, but that should be enough for you to be able to solder it exactly from that point there. And uh, I just basically, just give me a little bit more cable. Let's just pull the loom across and just pull it up just to give you that little bit more play so you can get it soldered on. But that's exactly the cause in my occasion anyway. 0x05. Right, this is my salvage. Uh, scanner unit with a document feeder on it. I got this from a, another machine that has a print head issue. Um, I've done a print head before on one of these machines and it's, it takes like half a day, but uh, if not longer, actually, it would make a heck of a video, put it that way. But um, what we'll do with this one, so I salvaged it, I've, I've salvaged other parts for other machines for it, but uh, um, I'm going to put it on this machine first, but I'll show you the difference before we put it back together. So, if I just take that screw out here, there we are, and then 
then flat blade in there, or the plastic tool would be better. Stop you marking it. And then if you can see that, let me zoom in. So, little hinge. So you can see the cables are all tucked in behind this miler to help protect the cable. And they took it through, go through here, this little hinge here, and go down. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it comes through here, through that hole there. Uh, here we are, through that hole there, uh, right across the bottom to the actual wiring limb on the other side. So, this one's in really good condition, no damage to the to the hinge but um, yes not a mark on there not a problem in there at all so we'll we'll rebuild this now and put it back on the machine okay so I'm put it back on so it just slides on there we are Quite on there actually. There we are. That's it. I'll pop it back on. Now I'm holding it up. And I'm going to collect, uh, connect the cable that's underneath. There's a short one here. Pop that in there. Pop the FFC cable back in. It's important at this point, by the way, when you're putting this back in, is that you don't trap these cables. So I'm going to gently just drop the scanner unit. And just move these cables around here. Took them behind that piece of plastic there to stop them from coming out, which I'm having great fun in doing so. There they are. That's it there. Right, let's see if we can get these connectors back in. Put them on just to clean the cover up a little bit. Look. Start with the top one, which is the biggest one. That's it. Just take your time with these, don't force them. You can quite easily put the three pins and the two pins, or, or you can put a two pin and the three pin quite easily if you force it a little bit. Good eyes does help. You could use a flat blade or tweezers to help you get these in. Uh, I'm just lucky enough I've done a worked on a few machines with connectors, so I was gonna say I'm making it look easy. Let's pop that in with a flat blade properly. Let's make sure all the others are in. There we are. in there which is there's two different types on this machine that we come across as you can see there so those ones go into plastic nope that's the one that goes into metal and that one goes into plastic so we want the one that goes into metal because it's an earthen cable Don't over tighten it. You just round the threads really. Put the tape back on. Right, two screws at the back. Put them in next. Let's 
spin around see the bit of yellow in on there three screws back in here with the document feeder up out of the way Oh look at that, I don't know if you can see that, no you can't. So move the document feeder out of the way and it gives a bit more space. So it sits like this and we've got that screw that I left in there earlier. So we'll pop that in there. Feed this along. Yeah, actually, just a matter of interest, uh, you know, the three screws that we took off, two of them are actually covered by this cable and it's kind of lost its um, sticky. It's a little sticky, it's not too bad actually, but it doesn't really cause a problem, it doesn't matter if it floats around a little bit. The machines normally just sits on a table and that's the end of it, isn't it? So, it's not going to bounce around too much. Cable in there. Put it back in. So clips in the back first, and then just push down, and that's it fitted. Okay, so um, I just spent a bit of time cleaning the underside of the document feeder. It was uh, a bit scrubby with pen marks and everything like that. You got a bit of yellow and going on there, but. You know, as long as it works, that's the main thing. So, I'm going to spin it around now, we'll finish off putting it back together at the back. I'm so confident that it's going to work. I'm not even going to test it first. I'm just going to put it back together and then switch her on. And that's how confident I am. It's going to be fine. Right. All right, let's get this cover back on. Hopefully. Sit it right. There we are. Two screws. And then we'll put this rear cover back on as well. It's got the bypass on it. Got to make sure actually that you haven't got any of those wires trapped there when you put this part on. So two screws on this side. And then two screws here as well. This back on. This is the jam point at the back. Here we are. Uh, we've got these two uh, dust covers for the bypass at the back. So I'm just going to put these back on. I hate bending plastic, I really do. But uh, yeah, that pops in there like that. Bend it a little bit, pop it in there. 
There we are. And then we have those two that fit in two holes here. So we'll put them in again. We have to bend it. Only bend it as far as you need to. Get one of the holes in first and then bend it a little bit. There we go. And that's it. Just to just cover on. All right, there's the socket for the power. So I think we're ready to test it. Pop that in. Spin around. Fire up. Yeah, see it's coming up with a message there saying the print head nozzles may be clogged. So what we'll do is we'll do a print head, well we won't do a print head clean, we'll do a nozzle check. Alright, okay. Yeah, that's A4 paper. Set up, uh, maintenance and then a nozzle check. So we'll do a clean and then we'll come back in a few minutes when it's finished. Right, it's uh, finished the clean. Uh, let's test another page. Hopefully it's a bit better than the last one. I'm expecting it to be perfect. Ah, close enough. I'm happy with that. Alright, let's check the document feeder. We've got no error code. That is brilliant. That's what we're looking for. When you open and shut the document feeder for me, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But uh, definitely fine this time. That's it then.